All right, today we're going to talk about DNA and RNA, and more specifically how amino acids are created, um, which are the building blocks of life, and a bunch of amino acids put together form proteins. So what is an amino acid? Well, it's um, basically the building blocks of a protein, and there's three parts to the amino acid. We have an, uh, an amino group right here, and that's distinguished by the presence of a nitrogen. We have a hydrogen, and we have a, carbo a carboxyl group, and that's a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and then a single bond to an oxygen. And all amino acids have this structure right here. These three things, the amino, the hydrogen, and the carboxyl groups are all bonded to a carbon, and then they have uh, what makes them different is the R group. The, th the thing that's attached uh, also to this carbon is different for each amino acid, and so that's what makes each amino acid dis uh, distinct is that it has a different R group here, a different group of elements. It might just be a hydrogen, it might be a carbon and three hydrogens. It's different for every amino acid. And there are 20 amino acids. Right, and there are 20 amino acids. And so proteins are made of amino acids, and DNA is kind of the prisoner of the nucleus. DNA is extremely important. It provides and has the information, the code for making uh, proteins, and so to ensure that it's protected, it stays inside the nucleus. It wants so if uh, genetic information is going to stay inside the nucleus, then um, that DNA information has to be copied into a different type of molecule, RNA, that can actually leave the nucleus to then um, give the directions to create something. So just a little review, proteins are made up of these smaller units called amino acids, um, and the order of the amino acids that determines the protein is stored in the DNA. So DNA has the instructions, and then those instructions are, are copied into RNA. So RNA is very similar to the DNA molecule. It's made of those little Legos or nucleotides, and each of those nucleotides has now a ribose sugar instead of deoxyribose, a phosphate group, and then one of four nitrogen-containing bases. And all of the bases are the same except thymine, is now going to become uracil. And uracil is kind of cool. It's, um, it's a cheaper molecule to produce in terms of energy. So I always kind of think of it like when you go to the store with your mom and your mom buys that like cheap cereal that's in the bag at the bottom that you don't want anyone to see that you have. Even though you could buy the box of like regular um, Fruit Loops, uracil is the bag. It's the generic molecule cheaper to produce um, than DNA. So you want the expensive stuff in the DNA and the cheaper stuff in the RNA. Um, and RNA is only one strand instead of two strands, um, which we'll see in a second here. And so there's three different types of RNA. The first RNA or type of RNA is mRNA, messenger RNA. And it has a linear shape where it has just one strand. And its job or its function is to carry the code for protein synthesis into the cytoplasm. So messenger RNA is actually a copy of the DNA strand. It's a complementary copy. And it starts in the nucleus, and then it actually leaves the nucleus and goes out into the cytoplasm. The second type is rRNA, and it combines with protein to form a ribosome. And so RNA, uh, rRNA and proteins together form together to make the ribosome, which we'll see in a few minutes. And the last type is transfer RNA, or tRNA, and it has a clover leaf shape, and its job is to carry amino acids to the ribosome, as we'll see in the next steps. So um, RNA's job is to take that genetic information stored in DNA and then to uh, move it so that uh, those instructions can be used to create proteins. And proteins do a tremendous amount of different things. Um, every time we say enzyme, we're talking about a protein. They help um, metabolize uh, for the cells. They build shape. Um, they send signals and they receive signals. And basically, when you look at yourself, in the mirror, you're largely looking at, uh, at protein, the things that you can touch and feel. Okay, so if you take a look at this image really quick, we're going to break it down into details in a second, but here's the cell's nucleus, okay? And that's where the DNA is stored. The DNA can't leave the nucleus, so it's going to have to be copied into RNA, which leaves the nucleus, okay? And then um, that RNA, you can see it here, this mRNA is then going to attach to a ribosome. Once it's at the ribosome, every set of three um, bases can be read 
and an amino acid's coated off of those three bases. So let's break it out into a little bit more detail. This picture will be good for you guys to review if you're ever trying to put the whole picture together um, because you can see we start with DNA, we end up with mRNA, and then the ribosome puts the pieces of the amino acid together. So there's eight steps to forming uh, a protein, and the first half of that is something we call transcription. And so during transcription, this is when we're actually copying the DNA and producing a messenger RNA strand. And so the first step of, of these eight is for messenger RNA to be copied from the DNA. The second is for that ribbon of mRNA, remember it's just one strand, it's not a double strand, but it's one. It leaves the nucleus and it attaches to a ribosome, and this takes place in the cytoplasm. Each set of three nucleotides on the messenger RNA, they're called codons, and they are responsible or they code for just a specific amino acid. So every three, um, uh, every three nucleotides on a messenger RNA strand are called a codon, and that the order of those or the combination of those three uh, nucleotides is responsible for a specific amino acid. Just a little side note, you guys. Um, sometimes uh, different letters will code for the same codon. So when we use a table in the future, don't be alarmed if you know two different sets of letters code for the same amino acid in the end. So the second part of this is called translation. So once mRNA has copied the genetic code and brought it to um, the ribosome, um, tRNA has a sequence that matches up to mRNA's codon, and it does it with the complementary base pairs again. So it, uh, the ribosome reads mRNA's codon, and tRNA brings the complementary uh, base pair. So it does this, tRNA brings the amino acid from the cytoplasm, um, and then the ribosome is going to connect that uh, any additional amino acids that get brought through the same process to the original amino acid. And over time, you're going to create this long chain of amino acids. Um, and this is going to continue until mRNA reaches a stop codon. And that's just a, a three base pairs that say, stop, we're done making the protein. And then um, it signals the ribosome to release the mRNA strand. <clears throat> And then um, the chain of amino acids is not actually a protein, even though you can kind of think of it being the same thing. That chain of amino acids is then folded, and it gets um, multiple, multiple fo folds. And sometimes the shape of the protein determines what it can do. So that's actually very significant, but we're not going to talk about it right here. Um, if we were in class, um, we would talk a little bit about... Um, where you're at right now in terms of these notes. So I want you to take a minute, think about these things. What do you wonder? What is it that you really didn't understand and need to revisit? And what do you find interesting? And we're going to take a moment to look at a little video putting these different pieces together. <laughs> 